everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how I've made this really fun pop-up box card with Santa falling down the chimney. This isn't my idea, I actually saw this on Pinterest and I'll link the person or the, the picture that I saw, I'll link it on my blog. Um, I don't believe there was a YouTube video or at least I didn't actually look for one because I know how to make the box cards and the Santa's feet are using my new stamp set that I have released and all of these pieces here are from props and other stamp sets which I will be sharing with you along with the stencil and the papers it's all part of my new release so I hope you enjoy the video I also show you how to make an envelope because the size of this is slightly larger than I usually do but hopefully you'll pick up lots of tips along the way so let me show you how to make it okay so first of all you're going to want your cardstock to make the base so this is 11 and a half by 8 so just slightly cut down a piece of A4 so along the long side you want to score at two and three quarters five and a half eight and a quarter and 11 inches and then along this short side you're just going to score it halfway so at four inches all the way down okay so there's all the scoring so you should have four rectangles at the top and then this thin tab here four along the bottom and again that thin tab that's now all ready. So that's all the scoring you need to do. Now it's up to you, you may want to fold and burnish now if you're not going to be doing any decoration on here. I'm now going to stencil this, otherwise just leave it flat, which I'm going to do. So, okay, so I'm going to be doing a little bit of stenciling on mine first of all. So with the half inch tab on my right hand side, this one here, the second rectangle in from the left, will become the, the one that's on the very front. So that's the one that I want to start my stenciling on. So this stencil here is my new stencil and you get the brickwork and you get this roof detail or it could be mermaid's scale, you know, fish scales, mermaid's tail. So you can use it for underwater themes as well, but you can turn it out this way, it can be a nice pattern. It's also a repeat pattern so you can move it along, which you'll see in a moment. So, But I'm going to start in this one and I'm going to overlap the stencil over each of the score lines. Now I'm going to have a bit of snow at the top because this is all going to get cut away as well and we're only going to keep one of these pieces. So. I'm not too worried for the minute, but I want to get this nice and straight and I just want to come up a little bit. Now I can see through the stencil, so I can see the bottom of the cardstock here. So I'm just going to have a little bit of the original colour showing through along the bottom there. And I've got roughly an equal amount overhanging into each of those other rectangles. So tack it down if you want, but I'm going to be moving this along, so I'm going to just hold it. But I'm using the Vintage Photo distressed oxide I have used mine a lot so it possibly is a little bit dry but we should still be able to make it work so I'm just going to hold this in place and just start inking over that okay I think I'm happy with that so now when I lift it off you get that really cool brickwork but now this is what I mean by it being a repeat pattern so I can move it along and these will slot in to these sections here so you just need to line it up again. I'm going to use the bottom. I'm just going to wipe that off just so I can see see through it there. Because if I line it up at the, again the same before, then I know that the brickwork is all going to line up. But I think that's about right. And that brings me right up to the very end of the card there. So now I'm just going to go and continue. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm not worried about this joining that piece up because that's actually sat perfectly on that half inch tab. So that's all going to be hidden, but I'm really pleased with that. It hasn't gone right to the top, but that doesn't matter because I'm going to be putting white over it. Okay, so now we want to fold and burnish all of those score lines. Okay, so it's going to come together and we want our fold to be, mine's going to be at the back left hand side. So there's that one that I said, the second one in, that's going to be the front. So when you bring it round, my join's going to be on the back left. So what we now want to do is cut, we want to keep this one here, we want to cut all this out. Okay, so I'm just going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut away the score line. So I'm cutting to the right hand side of it all along here and then all up that side okay and then you also want to remove the tab on this side here 
Okay, and you'll see there that joins up perfectly. Now what I probably should have said is don't score all the way through there. So when I do score that last one, I will just edit in only score down to the third score line. It will just weaken it slightly. It's going to be okay because I'm actually putting pattern paper over this, so mine will end up, you know, being strong again anyway. But just to stop, you actually want that to stay completely upright, like so. Okay, then I've got this piece here, which is three and three quarters by one inch. And along the three and three quarter side, you want to score at half an inch and at three and a quarter. So you've got a half inch tab on each side. Just fold and burnish. Now you could have more of these if you want. I would say you could have probably up to three of them in this one. But I'm just having the one because the only thing I've got popping out is Santa's feet. But if you've made these kind of pop-up box cards before, then you know that you can have quite a lot of things in here. Okay, so what we want to do is attach this one. So first of all, because it's only the one, I'm going to put the whole thing together. But I'll link in my other box cards, because if you've got a few, I've got a good way of doing it. Whilst it's flat, like kind of open like this, you attach them all on one side and then you lie them flat, add the glue and then just fold it over. And then when you open it, they're all perfectly lined up. But because it is just that one, it's just easier to do it this way. So I'm just going to add my glue. So like so, fold one half over with that tab and then the other one. And I've done pretty well lining up my brickwork because you can see it pretty much joins there. So I'm pleased with that. And I'm just going to fold it back that way. So now that's all done. Okay, then all you need to do is add your glue onto each of these. And then I'm just going to pop it roughly in the middle. You could bow it out slightly like that, just so it goes in. I'm going to keep it right up to the top. And then if you just focus on one side and just really stick that down, and then when you go to fold it flat, the other one will, you know, stick. Just make sure you fold it in that way you know it's perfectly lined up. But just roughly in the middle there, and then we've got our box shape. Now if you want to reduce this you can. If you feel that's going to be too big for maybe the, the, the design you're doing then do trim it down. But because I've got all of these elements coming in, the ho ho ho, and then by the time his feet stick up, I think it's quite a nice size. Like I said, it is a taller card, something a little bit different, but you can easily change this. You can certainly shrink all of this down if you want to. So now we can start putting everything together. Now I've got my decorative paper to go over the top here, but I'd already cut it to the exact size, which was two and three quarters by four. So you can see how that's gonna go there. But because I do just wanna reinforce this, I've got this piece here, which is two and three quarters by eight. And I'm actually gonna slot that in there just to keep it upright. So if you have done what I've done, like I've done, and just scored all the way through, that's just a quick and easy way to put some strength back into it again. But like I said, I will edit in to just score down to the third score line. And you may want to do this even if you're maybe doing it using a lighter weight cardstock. So, you know, it's entirely up to you. Okay, so now with this piece, like I said, two and three quarters by four. Or you could do two and three quarters by eight if you want it to go all the way down. And now I'm going to stick that one onto here. That's that exact size. I don't want a border with mine. I want it to completely cover that top there. And this is using the new paper pad that I have, and it's the perfect pop-ups one in this, this beautiful scene here. It's so nice. I think it goes perfectly with the craft card. Okay, so that's that. Then I have gone ahead and I have cut and coloured all of these pieces. I have lots of them all in a tray ready to go when I do my videos and just when I've been making my own Christmas cards. So these are all, I've got all the party props, there's the Christmas props which I've been using. So this all comes from these two stamp sets here along with this one here. So this is the Christmas party props. So I'm using the Ho Ho Ho, which is that one there. And then the gingerbread, the parcel, the candy cane, Rudolph's treats from another one, the naughty but nice are my favourites. So all of those there are all from this stamp set. Then I'm using obviously the Santa one because we need his boots, so that's them here. And I'm using Santa's here and then on the back I'm going to be stamping Santa Claus is coming to town. And there's the Santa's here. And then these ones here, the sack and Rudolph's treats. And then this is from the, actually I have used another stamp set. How many stamp sets can I use? It's this one here and it's the snowman and elf set and it's just the holly, but I'm not sure if, I might use it on the back with the sentiment. But anyway, so that's everything that I'm using. So now I want to attach, actually I'll do the boots last. So let's do the bottom area here. Oh, 
actually no, what I want to do first is the snow. So, so I have a sheet of copy paper and what I'm going to do is if you tear towards yourself with your right hand, so I'm going to do like that and just kind of let it go. I'm just going to add a little bit of shape. I've done about an inch here, I don't matter if it goes a bit thinner in places and I won't be having all of this because I only need to cover three sides because the back, well if you want to cover the back you can, but it's going to be something like that but with that raw edge that you get it gives it a really nice snow effect and I might add some sparkle on here but I only need it to go in fact what I will do is probably start from there and then work my way around because that's still yeah that still looks nice so I'm going to add my glue and just do it bit by bit and I'm just going to continue to wrap it around just hugging the top like I said, it's just copy paper, so you don't need to worry about putting score lines into it. You can just fold it, and then I'm just going to come off the edge there, and then I can just trim that off. Now, I think that looks really, really effective. I like that a lot. So now I'm going to bring in some foam pads, and I'm going to attach Santa's sack, first of all. I'm going to fold, probably, fold it that way so then I could have the sack that side yeah so whatever side you decide to fold it you can have it over kind of going over the edge if you do it that side and then fold it this way it's going to come out even more and it won't fit in your envelope so I'm going to overhang it slightly on that side and then I can start adding in a few other bits so we'll pop the present here so, and then we'll put the Santa's treats there. And then I can kind of position these just in between those because of the foam tape that I've got there. So the naughty and nice. I've also got the little gingerbread man. I've got the candy cane. I'm just wondering whether actually to have the naughty and nice kind of sticking up here because I think that could look quite good. So let's get Santa's feet down. Everybody knows how long, oh that was already stuck, how long this kind of stuff takes me. It's always the decoration always takes me ages but you've got them like so. So they want to just attach just the very tops so that's how it will look. So I'm going to pop a little bit of my quick grab glue here and um, I just realised I've stamped these onto, obviously that looks like the penguin there, so ideally you wouldn't want that, but never mind. Slightly angled out there. Yep, there's the penguin's face. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> and then I'm going to have it like so. So now we've got his feet. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah let's have a little look I'm just wondering well the ho 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 so again it's going to go that way so I need to keep that really within just wondering now whether I go that way because then I can overhang it all that way instead yeah I'm going to go that way instead because I do want it coming off that side but I haven't gone over that much there so I can still change that over this is what happens you see but hopefully it's helping you when you go to do yours. So we're going to have that one just like so. Okay, before I stick any more of that down, I'm going to add some glitter. Okay, so I'm using the Arteza Snow White and it's really nice. So it's got like a bluey kind of like back colour to it so it gives it that cold snowy look so I'm just going to cover this you can see it there it looks really cool anyway just as you know with that effect but I am just going to spread it out a little bit just so it gets a nice covering and put this all over now look at all that sparkle from the snow it looks so good can you see the blue there? I'm not sure how well. Possibly not, but it is there. Okay, so now I'm going to stick 
this one down on the back. So this was two and three quarters by three and three quarters. So it will give me just a little border of that brickwork that I've done, like so. And then I guess I could pop that there. Maybe that one there, if I write small, whoever I end up sending this one to. But I just think it adds some nice detail to the back there as well. And you could put the white piece all the way up there if you wanted to. You know, you might be, this could be going to a work colleague and you might have a few people signing on the back of it there. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the back of that one as well. Okay, so I'm taking off the Santa's here because it's pretty obvious that Santa's here and I've got the ho 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 on the front and then I've got that nice sentiment on the back but I really want to use these in here so I'm just going to add, well, I'd usually use hot glue but this will be fine. I'm just going to pop that one in there. I know there'll be lots of you watching going, no you should have put that one there or you should have put that one there but it is what it is. I'm going to go for this look now. That is the card all finished. I think it's turned out really nice. So now I want to make my envelope. So because when this folds flat, it will be a six by eight size card. So slightly different, but it is on the envelope punch board. So the six by eight is the card size. So it's the second to last one there. It's telling me I need a piece of cardstock that's 11 by 11. And you want to do your first score line at four and seven eighths. Now, now if you don't have an envelope punch board, there are tutorials on YouTube showing you how you can make envelopes without them, but it's a really useful tool. I've had this for years and it's just one of those, if I was to say to someone starting off what you know kind of court tools do you need, this is definitely one that I would recommend. So four and seven eighths is the first score line. So I'm going to pop this in and I'm going to line up the end here to the four and seven eighths. And I'm going to punch and score. Okay, now mine doesn't go right off the end because I don't have the extender arm because this is an old one, but it's fine. I can join it in a moment. I then also then like to do that same score line on the opposite side. So again, four and seven eighths, punch. And I find I always get perfect results by doing it that way. Now all I want to do is on the other two sides, pop it in and I'm going to ignore all of this now. I'm going to slide this along until this score line hits the corner of this notch here and then punch and now that will join up perfectly in the corner and then again this one here pop it in slide it along that notch there until it joins up here and that score line hits the corner score punch and now you will have those notches all perfectly placed so that's everything there and then you just want to fold and burnish papers this is from an old scrapbooking pad that I had. So it's this inside kind of distressed look. But now when I fold in those, you've got your envelope. If you want to make it a bouncy envelope, which this probably would be because there's quite a lot of bulk to it, I always sit the card in first. So you'll see now I can sit that in there and it sits perfectly. I then bring in the sides and add my tape and then close it and it will give you the room that that card needs rather than you trying to make it first and then squeezing it into that area. So I'm just going to run my tape. I'm just going to take the backing off. If this had no bulk to it you wouldn't have to keep the card in here and you don't have to keep it in here while you stick these bits on. I'm just doing it this way but now I can bring over the sides and then bring the envelope up there to close it. Now if I take that out, this is what I mean by bouncy. Oh, have I still got glue on my snow there? Okay, it seems some of this was still a little bit wet so I've just left it for a minute. But it will now slide in, obviously just be careful whatever you have with your embellishments, but that will now close up and you have that ready to post. So I'll just pop a little white sticker on there. I tend to put my envelopes inside a padded envelope as well if I'm posting them, but I think a lot of these cards I'll be posting by hand anyway. But now when I take that out, close that one up. And this is what I mean by bouncy. Can you see it bounces because it gives you that room that you need. But now we have a very fun pop-up box card with Santa falling down at the chimney. <laughs> I think it's turned out really well. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. I hope you picked up some tips along the way. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. I'll link everything that I've used in the description box below. I'll pop up here some more pop-up box cards. So um, you may be interested to check those ones out and I'll be back very soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.